Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. Last year, HP released a Pavilion 15 gaming laptop with up to GTX 1060 graphics, and it was hugely popular. It did run hot though, and I was hoping that they would actually have introduced fan control for 2019. As they refreshed the laptops with either an i5 9300H, GTX 1650 GPU like mine for $850, or an i7-9750H GTX uh, 1660 Ti model for $1,070. Now note that both come with the same 60Hz IPS display. Now mine was made by BOE and it, it only had 60% of sRGB and a low max brightness of 280 nits. Now it's not ideal for content creation, but fine for the budget gamer. In the description, I include my calibration file for you to use. Even at 50% brightness, it was only 100 nits, which is what most laptops are at when they are set at 25%. Now I watched YouTube at 25% brightness for five hours, 30 minutes, which is the best case scenario for battery life. Now compared to a 144 Hertz panel, you do get there more ghosting. Now, not that my eyes are sharp enough to spot it in gameplay though. More pronounced is tearing if you don't use V-Sync, as this is not a G-Sync panel. Backlight bleed is very minimal though, and makes you wonder why expensive laptops cannot do the same as here. Now for those that are sensitive to PWM flicker, you might want to look elsewhere. I did try using the PWM tool, and at anything but max brightness, the camera picked it up. HP kept mostly the same design as last year though. You have a black plastic chassis with a reflective HP logo on the lid. It is a compact design, held by the thin bezels at the side, and with the webcam up top. So here's the 720p webcam. Not too bad, I suppose. And when you're typing, yeah, not too bad for a budget laptop. The panel does have a little bit of flex because of the central hinge, which doesn't feel super sturdy. Many have mentioned that they would prefer not to have green key lighting, and perhaps they may offer different options later on. But at the moment, this is all we get. The keyboard deck and the Elan trackpad are both made out of plastic. Now I did like how the trackpad is nice and wide and it's actually fairly responsive. Now the keys themselves are highlighted with green paint and there's definitely a little bit of flex in the center if you press firmly. You do get a separate number pad and one button control for adjusting the speaker volume and brightness, which I do like. The power button is located to the left and there is no Windows Hello. You will notice that there is a ventilation strip above the function keys. Now the bottom panel is also made out of plastic with a large air intake grill over the fans. Now this is slightly larger than last year's model and it appears to be positioned over the fans more. So this does bode well for cooling and indeed this laptop does run cooler than last year's model. The fit is very tight. So if you want to get inside, I do recommend using a suction cup to create a bit of a gap in which to insert your prizing tool. You have a 52 watt hour battery a two and a half inch hard drive bay and a Samsung 256 gigabyte PCI Express M.2 SSD. You also get one stick of uh, eight gigabyte Samsung RAM. And as I show in a bit, I really recommend running dual channel. Now here is a photo of the RAM that is in my laptop, just in case you want to match it up. Now the Wi-Fi card is here and actually gives me good download speeds. The cooling system has also been revamped slightly. You, you still get two uh, shared heat pipes uh, between the CPU and the GPU leading to the fans, but this time you also get a third heat pipe connecting components above it. On the left, there is an HDMI, a USB 3.1 Type A, Ethernet jack, USB-C port that is not actually Thunderbolt compatible, nor can you use it to power the laptop. You also have an SD card reader that leaves just a very little bit sticking out when the card is inserted. Now on the right, you have a combo headphone mic jack, and two more USB 3.1 Type A ports, and the power connector, which is at the back. There are no ports at the back, just the pavilion logo engraved on the hinge. At five pounds, one ounces or 2.3 kilos, it is quite lightweight. And given that the 150 watt power brick is very small, the total travel weight is a mere six pounds. The total power pull I saw from the wall was 147 watts and I saw no battery drain whilst gaming. At idle, the fan noise was a quiet 33 decibels and even under full load, this only climbed up to 44 decibels. Now there is no fan control, but it's safe to say you can game okay in a shared room without disturbing people. I was very impressed on how cool the chassis was. 
spiking only to 37 degrees Celsius in the center of the keyboard. Now hot air is moved out nicely at the rear and underneath it is, it is equally as cool. There is not much in the way of useful software though, just perhaps the HP CoolSense and the HP hardware diagnostics. The cool sense is supposed to adjust the fan speeds if the notebook is not in a stationary position, just as if you were perhaps using it on your lap. Now I just left it uh, on the default on setting during my testing. I went into the hardware diagnostics tool upon boot and it gives you the system information, system tests and the ability to roll back that BIOS, which is a good to have. Now the BIOS is somewhat limited. You do have an option to optimize the battery and switch between UEFI or legacy boot order. I ran my test using one stick of RAM as configured and also with two sticks so you can actually see what extra performance you will get. I also ran the test with a CPU undervolted by 155 millivolts and the GTX 1650 overclocked by 163 MHz. First up is my handbrake encode test. Now this tests the CPU performance. Here I measure the time taken in minutes to do a 4GB video file conversion. The pavilion is at the top. The orange bar is the stock time and the green bar is with the CPU undervolted. You can see straight away the 9300H smokes the 4 core Ryzen 7 3750H and undervolting shaved off nearly 4 minutes and was slightly faster than the outgoing 8300H. Now running dual channel and undervolting shaved off just over an extra minute allowing it to be within 20% of the 6 core 8750H CPU. Here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, using DX12 and higher settings. Using single channel RAM, I didn't see a huge difference with uh, dual channel here. And as you can see, the GPU is being well utilized at 99%. The CPU never went over 89 degrees and averaged only 29 watts and maintains a decent boost clock. Likewise, the GPU never went over 69 degrees and pulled a max of 51 watts. Now lowering quality settings did see some nice performance gains here. The 1660 Ti Max-Q was 30% ahead. We see much the same in Overwatch. Not a lot of difference between dual and uh, single channel RAM. The GPU again being well utilized and the CPU averaging 33 watts and 3900 MHz with a peak temperature of 88 degrees. Now this is definitely a stark contrast from what I was seeing with last year's model. Lowering quality settings again saw some nice performance gains and it's good to see that at 83 FPS we matched the six core MSI GF75 with the same GPU. The 1660 Ti and the GTX 1060 were 35% ahead though. Now here we have Rainbow Six Siege using ultra settings. Single channel on the left and dual channel on the right. The GPU is being more utilized with dual channel and this does give a better performance. The average CPU temperature in both were around about the same at 75 degrees Celsius. Lowering quality settings in single channel didn't yield much benefit and I suspect if you did dual channel this would help out a lot here. The GTX 1650 was 10% behind the GTX 1060 and was 14% behind the GTX 1660 Ti. On to Far Cry 5 using ultra settings, single channel on the left and dual channel with the undervolt and overclock on the right. We see quite an improvement, at stock the CPU did peak to 97 degrees and pulled up to 62 watts. Now the undervolt definitely helps and brought that peak to 88 degrees and 43 watts. The GPU overclock also helps a bit here as well. I wanted to show the benefits of the undervolt here because this is one of the hottest running games out there. As you can see with dual channel combined with the CPU undervolt and GPU overclock we gain an extra 20% putting it in sniffing distance of the 1660 Ti Max-Q and the GTX 1060. Finally Battlefield 5 DX11 using ultra settings. We have single channel on the left and dual channel with the undervolt and overclock on the right. Again, single channel limits the GPU as you can see by its low utilization, but adding that extra stick of RAM really helps and the undervolt keeps the temps in check. So running dual channel increases the frame rate from 40 to 52. Now that's an extra 30% and overclocking adds an extra 10%. I would say this is def definitely worth doing as it is now only 15% behind the GTX 1060 and 1660 Ti Max-Q. Now here are the average and max CPU temperatures across the games I tested. Sure, some of the games peaked into the 90s, but plenty didn't. And as a result, the temperatures are a stark contrast to what we saw last year, where I actually needed to underclock the CPU. Running dual channel RAM 
makes the CPU work harder. So the peak temperatures did go up. So to counter that, you will need to do an undervolt. So how would I sum up the new 2019 HP Pavilion 15 gaming laptop? Well, mostly it does resemble last year's model. It looks the same, has the same green keys, the same no fan control, the same hinge design, and the same looking panel. But it does have subtle differences, such as the, the better intakes underneath and an extra heat pipe. Now the fans do remain quiet, even under load. But the enthusiast in me would like to see fan control, you know, like we get on the Nitro 5. Now performance is good once you do add another stick of RAM. It is frustrating at this $850 price point that they do not include that stick of RAM, extra stick of RAM, nor do they include a hard drive for storage. So consequently, I do think the GTX 1060 model with the six core CPU does remain the better value. But to be honest, I do suspect that this will come down in price. And I'm thinking around about the $750 mark would be a good level. At least it is cooler than last year's model, and that is a good thing. So I would like to thank you for watching. Now remember, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.